Hey what's up everybody my name is Mike and this is Tech404 so today we're going to be checking out the Qbot Magic a relatively affordable smartphone that falls under the £100 price point that rocks Android 7.0 a dual camera setup and a pretty large battery so how good is this smartphone and should you buy one we're going to find out right now on this review. So one of the big draws of the Keybot Magic is that all eight sides of the smartphone are actually curved. So this actually applies for all four sides on the front and on the rear. Now when you actually slide from panel to panel, I've only got one panel on, or swipe down from the notification bar, the actual experience is actually really nice. Now the whole device is made out of plastic and the uh, keys on the bottom, they're not backlit, which is a little bit annoying, but the actual feel of the device in your hand is actually pretty nice. Now in terms of a design element, I quite like the edge on the Keybot Magic, it wraps all the way around. At first glance you might think it's metal, but it is and it is all plastic and the keys are also plastic. In terms of a budget smartphone, this is to be expected. The Magic also ships in the gold and the black colour, or you can pick it up in the grey and the black, there's no difference in price. Now more often than not the display and more importantly the responsiveness of that display is actually let down on a lot of budget smartphones especially at the sub £100 price point. I'm actually happy to report that this thing actually responds really really well. Now after a week it hasn't started stalling or freezing or anything like that and especially when you're playing games especially like twitchy games like Helix whatever this game is seems to be really popular but very addictive and annoying. The display on the actual smartphone is a 720p with 294 pixels per inch and it has about 90% of the NTSC colour space covered. Pictures look pretty good, colours really do pop and it does actually respond well. It has got adaptive brightness which a lot of budget smartphones at this price point don't have and you can also go and switch on gesture controls and again this is just a good test of the responsiveness of that screen. Let me show you. Now if I hit back and go back into the menu by swiping two fingers you can see that I can actually change the wallpaper. Let me do it again. There you go. You can Add various different wallpapers to this so you can actually control it three fingers and it will take a screenshot let me show you again there you go and one more time you can see how responsive that screen really is I also like the fact that Keybot actually shipped the Magic with a clear silicon case included within the retail packaging. Now this is quite useful because a lot of the time smartphones like this from China it's hard to find a case. I'm happy to report that the case fits perfectly and all the cutouts are spot on with nothing interfering any of the ports. The back of the device itself is all black plastic and it does leave some fingerprints so using that case is a good idea. Removing the back cover will expose that battery. Now the battery inside the Magic is a 2600 milliamp battery charge our battery there's a 5 volt power brick enclosed and you also get a flat roll micro USB cable and um, briefly touching on the contents there was no headphones within the box I don't know if they come with it I didn't get any in mine to charge the actual device from 5% battery life to 100% it took me around 2 hours and 40 minutes to fully charge the device which could be a little bit better I guess but in terms of will this smartphone last you the full working day well with Wi-Fi turned on and sync turned on and screen brightness set to about 35% I managed to get about eight and a half hours out of this smartphone, which honestly is respectable for a budget smartphone. I'm sure this can be improved with future updates. Now other noteworthy features were on the rear of the device, there's twin micro SIM card slots, both of which worked absolutely fine. I tested with a 64GB Samsung Class 10 micro SD card and sequential read and write performance was much better than I had actually expected. So again, well done to Qbot for that. And for those of you benchmark geeks then, 529 in Geekbench 4 on the single core and 1524 in the multi-core score. Now in terms of what that means, for a MediaTek 6737 device, then this is pretty average, this is what I'm actually expecting, so it actually does what it needs to do. So how about that headphone jack on this budget smartphone from Qbot? To test this we plugged in a good pair of budget headphones in Audio-Technica M20Xs and honestly using this with a budget smartphone recording from about 30 centimeters away with the Rode Video Micro, the audio quality when I actually hit play Instantly, at about 60-70% volume, the clarity was really good, especially on the vocals. The highs were pretty damn solid, and there was very little clipping. Now, even when I cranked up the smartphone to its max volume level, there was very little in the way of any kind of distortion. Just like the Qbot R9, I was again well impressed with what this phone can do in terms of audio quality coming through that headphone jack. While we're on the topic of audio, here's a sample from those bottom-firing speakers. So I rap 
write this open letter When I left the world was broken I just hope it's gotten better You argue who's the greatest I left quotes for y'all to measure Y'all were focused on who's clever So how good is the camera on the Keybot Magic That dual 13 plus 2 combo How good is it? Can it actually take a decent image? Can you use it for social media? So here's a random shot I took in the office with the camera's flash turned off and again with the flash turned on so the flash actually works it doesn't completely blow out the image and most of the images that i took under decent lighting came out pretty good with a good amount of detail and the colors look pretty damn vibrant as well so in terms of any other settings the other notable one it does have a fake bokeh effect and if you actually position it right you can get some really cool shots so the camera's autofocus is also relatively easy and the menu and the navigation within the camera app is pretty solid too and before we wrap this video up, as you can see, the Cubot Magic can actually open apps a lot faster than my Samsung Galaxy J3. Not only that, that when you're actually downloading an app, for example, from the Google Play Store, like you can see on screen right now, connected to the same 2.4 GHz home network, the Cubot Magic absolutely thrashed the Samsung Galaxy J3, a device that cost almost £50 more. So that was really shocking. Honestly, it was really shocking. I didn't think this was going to happen. Look where the Samsung Galaxy J3 is. And as soon as it's finished, let me show you that I'm actually connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Very impressive stuff. And honestly, that truly impressed me. So there you have it, guys. The Cubot Magic, a sub £100 smartphone that really has got a lot of things going for it link in the video description with an off code if you guys want to go check it out if you feel like being awesome leave a like subscribe and i'll catch you next time